Good morning, this is Pastor John Cranwell Fisherman and the um, GRV TV with my brother Chris here in the Philippines, in Kansas City, Philippines, in a nice, bright, sunny day. It's, we're coming into our summer now, and over there in Aussie land, Australia, I know it's, it's your summer's kind of finished. And uh, still a little bit hot there, but uh, here it's hot every day, it's like summer every day here. It's great to be in the Philippines, it's a great country. Mabuhay is what they say to you here, Mabuhay. Life in the Philippines is great. So this morning, what will be our subject? Let's have a look what I've got in my little book here. Is hell just a religious scare and fear tactic? Is hell just there to scare you, to make you to follow somebody who believes in hell and heaven, to get you out of hell? Is it just a scare tactic? Is it just to frighten you into following a religion or following Jesus Christ? Because there is a difference, and I want to point that out this morning. So we've got to have a look mm -hmm. at hell if it is just a scare tactic. Is it really real? Like we've done this before about is hell real? Um, but the thing is, is, but is it just a scare tactic? Do religions use this just to scare you into following their leader? Okay, like Pope Francis. The Roman Catholics, they use hell a lot. They're very scared of hell. You, you can ask a Roman Catholic, why, why do you want to go to heaven for? Because I don't want to go to hell. That's the thing. I remember many years ago in Singapore, I was in the Tiger Balm Gardens. And uh, we went in there and we had a look in the Buddhist uh, temple. And in there was their... Uh, interpretation of hell in little models. It was horrific. It gave me a headache. In fact, it put me into a, a very depressed state. It was horrible. It was the most horrible thing I've ever seen. And, um, and so here we see that, that in religion, they do use hell as a scare tactic to, to put fear into you so that you'll choose to follow their religion or their religious leader or cult or whatever it might be. But having sa saying this, the Bible speaks about hell not as a scare tactic, but maybe it'd be more like a, a warning of the consequences of rejecting the real God of the Bible. Now that's different, because to warn is to love, to love one is to warn one. This morning, before I came here, I spoke to a few people about the Bible, and just around the corner from here, I, I met this guy called Michael. And I said, do you have born again friends, Mike? He said, yes. I said, but do they tell you about the Bible and the difference between religion and Christianity? He said, yes. So long story short, I asked him, when do you think is the right time to be saved, Mike? He said, right now. I said, that's what the Bible says. So he became born again. He was very pleased. I said, don't forget to tell your friends, your loving, caring friends, who have dared to tell you the difference between religion and relationship. And then just to, coming around the corner, I bumped into two other people. Um, another Michael, by the way, and his wife, uh, uh, Leila, Leila. And um, they had born-again friends, too, that had told them about Jesus. Isn't that amazing? And long story short, I asked them the same question, when do you think is the right time for you to be saved? They said, now, today. So they came, these three people who had born-again friends who told them about the Bible, about Jesus. And uh, so you see, um, they, I asked them the question, well, where do you prefer to go for eternity, heaven or hell? And they said, oh, heaven. I said, that's right. Um, and so I didn't uh, elaborate too much on hell because they've already heard it from their friends. So they were ready to come to Christ. And I hope that after this message that you too will be ready to come to Christ. So let's have a look a little bit more about this question. Is hell just a religious scare and fear tactic? So even though hell um, is real and organised man-made religions preach hell, it's waiting for you if you are bad. Okay. And heaven is only for those who are good. 
Now, nobody's good, but this is the way the religion attacks this uh, issue. Religion judges people and condemns them. Let's have a look in 2 Corinthians, shall we? In the New Testament, in the Bible. And chapter 3, verse 6 and 9. See what Paul the Apostle has to say about this issue. 2 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 7 to 9. And Paul says this, he says, The old way, with laws etched in stone, led to death. Though it began with such glory that the people of Israel could not bear to look at Moses' face when he came down from the, from the top of the mountain with the Ten Commandments, for his face shone with the glory of God, even though the brightness was already fading away. Shouldn't we expect far greater glory under the new way now that the Holy Spirit is giving life, not death, as the Lord did? If the old way which brings condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the new way which makes us right with God? In the old way, people got right with God through the sacrifices of animals. Once a year, going to the temple, having them sacrificed for their sins. And that washed away their sins. But when Christ came, for, for uh, three to four thousand years later, he died on the cross and rose again, shed his perfect sacrificial blood, and that was the new way that didn't just wash our sins, of, just didn't um, set us free from our sins, but it, it washed them right away. It just didn't um, forgive them. It's totally different. It's a new way. God's way, the new way, the New Testament way, is to wash away our sins. Okay? So, the new way is the best way. So, religion um, judges people. Let's have a look. Uh, you see, we mustn't judge people, eh, Chris? No. What is the Bible say about judging? If you judge people, you'll be judged the same. Don't judge. If we judge people, we'll be judged the same way. You know? So, it's biblical, do not judge. Yeah, not to judge. You see, because, what uh, uh, do not judge so that you will not be judged. Yes. Yeah. So if Jesus said um, in John 3, 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to judge you, but to save you who were lost. Jesus came not as a judge, but as a saviour. But when he comes again, he will come to judge the world. So we've got to make sure we're right with God. Like it says here, in the new way, we get right with God. No problem. Okay, so let's have a look at the scripture here. Um, Matthew 7, verses 1 to 5. Okay. Once I get, get it going. Matthew 7, and uh, verses 1 to 5. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged, or you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. This is Jesus Christ speaking himself and teaching. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you've got a big log in your own? Tell me about it. Hey, Chris. How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye. Hypocrite! Ooh. First get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls and turn and attack you. Okay. Right. So, instead, we look at Ephesians, chapter 4, okay, Roman, Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 29, and what does Paul say to the Church of Ephesus here? Do not use foul or abusive language, let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. So, here's the difference, instead of judging people, Okay, or using our language. Let everything you say be good and helpful. So we as Christians, we must 
get out there amongst the people. The sinners, like we were unsaved sinners, we're now saved sinners. We get amongst the people and we must speak to them and we must say good things and helpful things so that our words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. We need to encourage one another. The Bible says, neglect not your assembling of yourselves as a habit of some Hebrews 12, in, in Hebrews. It says, do not um, stop going to church, that little means, but encourage one another as we see the day drawing nearer. So encouragement is a big thing. Like, how many people will put others down to make themselves to justify their own inadequacies? How many people will put people down and make themselves feel better? That's not right. We must build each other up, hey, Chris? Yeah. What is it like when somebody comes up to you and you're having a bit of a downer? Someone comes up to you, hey, Chris, remember, mate, you're a son of God. You, you're, you're a victor. You're on the winning side. And uh, how, do you make, how does that make you feel? Feel good. Yeah, you're a, you're a good bloke. You're a good mate, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, good on you, Chris. Be you, you be you warm. Yeah. You feel good, don't you? Well, and rather, how would you feel? Oh, Chris, you loser. You're down out of You'll never make it. How, how do you feel? <laughs> I will spank him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, unfortunately, a lot of people are told that. Even parents tell their children. You have to say some comforting words. Comforting words, good words only. Yes, good words, encouraging words. Always build people up. Never put them down. Never, never make them feel low. You see, we're all equal. No matter what status we are, we're all equal in God's eyes. And let's not discriminate at all in any way. There's so much discrimination going on in this world. Uh, and uh, even the, um, the gays now, they don't like being discriminated. The people with orange hair don't like being discriminated. There's so much discrimination in this world. You see, the thing is, to discriminate a gay, you see, gays need to hear the gospel. We must never be a gay basher. There's too many gay bashers around. We must never bash the gays. We must love them as Christ. Gay being gay is a sin. Amen? Mm. It's a sin. What? Selling a lie is a sin. In the Bible, the Ten Commandments. To, to uh, call your brother Raka, which means fool, is a sin. You can go to hell for it. That's what Jesus said. To murder. Uh, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your, in your heart. Uh, you tell a lie, even a white lie, it's a sin. So being gay is another sin that God forgives. So if you're gay and you're listening here, I want to tell you, God loves you. He cares for you, and he desires to know you personally. But you must do what all the other sinners do. Repent from your gayness. Convert from it. And if you're religious as well, convert from your religion. The Bible says, repent therefore and be converted so that all your sins shall be washed away. Not just wiped away, but washed away. And times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. So when you do that, God forgives you of your gayness, forgives you of your religion, forgives you of your sin. It's as simple as that. It's that simple, like this. Just repent and be converted. That's all you've got to do, and then you get to heaven. And But the thing is, we say, people say that all gays go to hell. Only the gays that don't repent go to hell. You take Sodom and Gomorrah, two big major cities back in the, the book of Genesis, where... The, all the, the city was full of gays, full of homosexuals. That's what the Bible uses the word homosexual. And it was full of it, and they didn't repent. They were, they were doing oh, horrible things, you know, to angels and, and to um, uh, one uh, daughter of the owner of a house. Shocking. So what did God do? He sent hell, fire and brimstone down from heaven. Fire and brimstone down from heaven. And destroyed every homosexual. Every, the whole two cities full of them. Can you imagine? Two cities full of homosexuals. There's a, little, there's a thing going on in Australia now about, the, about a homosexual march. Have you, have you seen in the YouTube the homosexuals in the United States? 
we have a church then suddenly there's lightning that struck that place in that place because they are uh, and also a flood in another place in the world something like that uh, they are they are cursing God something like that yeah blasphemy something and then yes. there was a sudden lightning well they've chosen to be destroy like the that. place so God is real Absolutely. how about hell as a tactic hell is just a scare tactic well it's not a scare tactic actually it's a consequence that's it's, what hell it's is true. really it's a consequence it's a punishment from a holy god who who wants us to serve him and worship him he wants us to have our faith and trust in him to believe in him not some man-made religion full of all these um, idols and, uh, and all these different kinds of doctrines and teachings and practices that aren't in the Bible. Um, but he wants us to serve him, the God of the Bible. That's the big difference between religion and Christianity, is that we worship and serve the God of the Bible. Not some other God, like the Hindus, they've got hundreds and thousands of gods. When my wife and I were in Thailand, just before COVID, um, we saw this big fat Buddha there. They're everywhere. Everywhere. There's big Buddhas all over the place. And so, and, and this morning I was watching a video um, on uh, the reels on Facebook. And this lady said she was a Buddhist for 20 years, Chris. She did all the chanting and she did all the bowing down to all the idols. She said, and these big, fat, useless things uh, that have eyes that can't see and ears that can't hear, she said, I served them for 20 years. But somebody told me about Jesus and I came to Christ and I'm now born again. I found the truth because Jesus said, I am the way. She's a Thailander. Thailander? No, um, she looked a bit like a Filipino, really. I could be wrong. Um, but uh, Jesus, the Bible says, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through him, because he's the only one who died on a cross and rose again. That's why we can trust him. If he didn't rise again, he'd be just another religious leader. And so he's not just another religious leader. In fact, he said to his disciples to the, about religious leaders, because they were offended by what the words he said to them, because they're religious. R religion is offended by Christianity. And he said to his disciples, ignore them. They're blind guides leading the blind astray. So we must ignore religion. And don't ignore the evidence of hell. Don't ignore the evidence of heaven. Do not ignore the evidence of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who's coming back very soon again. So we must not ignore those things, but there's some things we must ignore. We must ignore religion. Religion has got no evidence of any truth. There's no truth in any of the 4,200 plus religions. We've all, most of us have been raised up in our parents' religion, like me. I was raised up in my parents' religion. But when somebody told me about Jesus, it made more sense. And this somebody was a young guy, half my age. I was 32 and he was what, uh, 16. And he, he made sense. He pointed me to Jesus. And so we must point people to Jesus away from religion because religion blocks the very thing that God has created you and I for, Chris. Religion has blocked our relationship with Jesus Christ, our relationship with the one true God, the creator God, the God of the Bible. So there's so many gods all over the world, Chris. So many. Now, Chris, you've told me in the past that you followed many religions. Uh, yeah, I tried many religions. Study. You research. studied them too? Yes, research. So, how many years did you study and join religions? Maybe 20 years. Gosh. So, I, so uh, I became a Muslim, I became a Buddhist, Judaism, <laughs> Mishanic, born again. So, why uh, did you choose to be born again? What did you find was the difference, the main difference between... Christ. Christ is the only way. Right. So you There's realize no other that way, yeah. the Buddha wasn't the way. No. That Mary or Pope Francis wasn't the way. And so forth and so on. Yeah. And Muhammad Christ was not is the, the only way. way. I am the truth, the way and the life. No That's God the comes. That's the key, isn't it? That's the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you see, 
religion will scare you to join him through hell. Um, okay. Now, did we get to Ephesians 4.29? Let's have a look. I better just check that. In this one. All right. Right. Yes, we did. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. So I hope you're being encouraged this morning. And I encourage you to turn away from your man-made religion that cannot forgive your sins or save you from hell. Yes, hell is a real place, as we've said before. And so uh, we must uh, be more like Jesus and speak about hell. Because, you see, Jesus spoke more about hell than he did heaven. In John 3, 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to judge you, but to save you who are lost. Without yeah. Christ, we are lost. And, and heading for damnation, we're heading for God's judgment and wrath. We're heading for the consequences of denying his Son by staying in our religion. We will go to that place. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm telling you the facts. Now, there's a different thing by warning. As I said, to warn is to love. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. So I hope that even so far in this last uh, 25 minutes or so, that I've encouraged you enough to say yes to Jesus, no to your religion, no to your sin, and he will forgive you and save you from this place that is real and is called hell. God made this, prepared it, in the Bible says, for the devil and his angels. His plan was not for you to go there. His plan was for you to go to heaven. His plan was for you to know him personally while you're on earth. That's his plan. But religion has turned people away from it. Philosophy has turned people away. Unbelief for, as atheists, agnostics, has turned people away from the real God. And they deserve and will receive the consequences of their disobedience and their rejection of the God of the Bible. Okay, so how will you make to go to sure you go to heaven? As I said before, you must repent and be converted. So let's pray a prayer now. That is, let's make a promise to God, the real God of the Bible. Let's now make a promise to Him that we're going to follow Him now and His Son, and that we're going to change our ways with His help. So let's pray now and ask God to forgive us. Are you ready, please? So just pray this prayer from your mouth and mean it in your heart. Dear God, please forgive me from all of my sins, from worshipping idols, from being in a religion that cannot forgive or save me. Please forgive me because I'm a sinner and I've sinned against you being a holy God. Because I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again on the third day for all my sins. I repent for my sins right now and I willingly turn away from my idolatrous religion that cannot save me from hell, cannot forgive me my sins, to follow only you, my Lord Jesus. This I promise you for the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving my sins and saving me from hell. Please make me the person that you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, if you've prayed that prayer, you've just made a promise to God. Now, how do you keep that promise? You say, well, I haven't got much faith. Well, the only way for you to get faith is to read the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. I cannot enforce this enough. We must read our Bible daily. Because we need to have strong faith in a God who loves us, who saves us and forgives us. We must have that strong faith to pass on to others so they too can make sure that they go to heaven too. And so you must love people enough to tell them the truth about the real God and the fake gods. The Christianity being different to religion. That man made religion. You must tell people those things. So now you are born again. You've prayed that prayer. You are born again. You're no longer whatever your religion was. Or if you were in philosophy, you're no longer into that. You're now born again. You're saved from hell. You're a child of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Anyone who is in Christ, though a new creature, the oldest passed away, behold, the new has come. Yes, you are brand new now. And God has washed away all your sins, and he will remember your sins no more. That's, he says that about 52 times in the Bible. 
It also says about fear not. You see, there's a difference in fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom in the Bible, says in Proverbs. And then another fear is that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind in Timothy, it says that. So God doesn't give us a, a spirit of fear or timidity, but he gives us power, love, and a sound mind. So when you have a sound mind, you don't fear, because in the mind, when we, when we make choices in our life, we've made many, many choices and many, many wrong ones. And the wrong ones are made up here in the mind, which is the devil's playground. And so here reigns fear, doubt, unbelief, all the bad stuff. But here in the heart, you've just chosen with your heart, with childlike faith, to receive Christ as your Saviour and Lord. You are now saved, forgiven, you're heading for heaven. You're a child of God, your name's in the book of life, you're one of his ambassadors, and also you're one of his masterpieces. This is all in the Bible. And so, I say to you now, there's four things that God requires of you. Only four things, new things for you to do. Most people don't read the Bibles in my country, but most people don't have Bibles. I never had one until I got born again 50 years ago. And then I bought my Bible straight away, I haven't stopped reading it. It's an everyday for me. Okay, so let's have a look. First of all, number one, we read the Bible. A chapter a day keeps the devil away. The Bible, B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. If you don't read the Bible daily, you won't get to heaven. That's how we build up strong palamalapalataya. That's a word for faith in the Philippines. Strong faith is through reading the Bible daily. Okay, so where do you start? I would suggest you start it in the Gospel of John in the New Testament. And it'll refresh you, it'll cleanse you, and God will speak to you. That's an understatement. And so when you finish one chapter for three months, only one chapter, please, and you take three or four minutes to read. That's all you need as a starter. After that, you try reading two chapters, one in the Old Testament, one in the New Testament, to give you a balanced spiritual diet for the next nine months, okay? After that, read as many chapters as you like, okay? Now, the second point that you need to do to start praying the right way to pray is not the upside down cross as the Roman Catholics have done. It's not bowing down like another religion bows down in front of each other with bottoms up. It's not like that. We lift up our holy hands, the Bible says. And you can talk to God anywhere you are. He's available 24-7. Okay? Talk to him just like a friend. He's your best friend. He'll never leave you nor forget you. He sticks closer than the brother, the Bible says. So you can always depend on God. You can always depend on God, the God of the Bible. You can't depend on any other God. It's a waste of time, a waste of your life. If you depend on any, any religion, you can never get to heaven. So now you've prayed that prayer, you've meant it from your heart, you confess it with your mouth, you confess Jesus' work. Now you're heading for heaven. You're heaven bound, no longer hell bound. You serve God and not the devil now, because now you're a child of God. So you read the Bible, you talk to God, and very important, tell others about Jesus. We must not allow our loved ones to go to hell. Please, tell your parents, tell your family, tell your children, tell your relations, tell your friends, your workmates, your schoolmates, wherever you go, tell people. What I do every day is I've got these gospel tracts. It's in Tagalog, the language they speak here in the Philippines. And I use these. I've got a bag full of them and in my pocket for reserve. For the message on the back, it says, life or death, life or death. It's a choice. Okay? Buhai o kamataya. That's what it means in Tagalog. And so, give people these. Talk to them about Jesus. Show them that God will forgive them of their sins. No matter how many sins they've done and how bad they were, because you see, God holds no sin against you anymore. Remember that. So read your Bible, talk to God, tell others about Jesus. And then last but not least, tell others about, sorry, go to a born again church and grow and grow and grow in the things of the God of the Bible. So God bless you. Welcome to God's forever family. You made the best choice of your life. Just do your best with God's help and you won't go wrong. Just do it. Bust a go in what they say. Just do it. Okay? God bless you real good. Now over and out, Chris. Yeah. God bless you real good. And you too, Chris. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Much okay? Oo. Okay. Thank you.